our next speaker is from Sweden. Uh, it's Alexander Holtner. Uh, he's a software consultant and founder of Holtner Technologies AB. And yeah. uh, you're going to uh, show us something about scheme taste about this is hard to pronounce uh, schema thesis, right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. So this is scheme based testing, right? Yeah, so you um, generate tests based on your schemas. Okay, is is everything fine on your side? The internet working? Have you told your kids to not use the Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, everything is great. <laughs> Perfect, then I think uh, we should begin. Uh, please start uh, sharing your screen and we'll see if everything works fine. Yes. Okay, so uh, I hope you, you see my slides now. Yes. So please yeah. get started. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. Um, so, schema based testing. Um, yes. Uh, okay. Sorry. I, I just dropped. Uh, yeah, so schema-based API testing. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, a technique that allows you to automatically, automatically create tests uh, from your API schemas uh, using a tool called uh, Schema Thesis. And uh, so everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, it's interesting to have it online. I've had a couple now. So firstly, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about myself. So as you heard, I'm freelance consultant. Uh, I'm the founder of Haltner Technologies uh, AB. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at ahaltner. You can also email me at uh, contact at haltner.se. Uh, I have a website haltner.se and uh, you can also see all the slides from this talk and all other talks I have more or less uh, at uh, slides.com slash haltner and I'm on LinkedIn as haltner as well. So should be easy to find there. Uh, so let's get on with the talk. So a short outline then. Uh, first, I'm going to start with a short uh, introduction to API schemas in case you aren't familiar with them already. And then I'm going to talk about some problems uh, you might have encountered or you may encounter. I'm going to talk about property-based testing shortly, about a library called Hypothesis. And then I'm going to talk about the uh, schema thesis, which builds on top of uh, hypothesis, but uh, al allows you to automatically generate tests based on schemas. Uh, I'm going to have a short demo showcasing how it works in action. Uh, I'm going to showcase its, both its um, CLI interface and its uh, PyTest integration mode. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the uh, stateful testing about the future of uh, schema phases and then some Q and A. So let's continue. Uh, so uh, API schemas, for those of you who haven't heard about it, uh, it's used to describe an API and one of the most widespread uh, uh, standards uh, these days is the open API spec, which uh, was previously known as Swagger. Swagger today is a UI for uh, open API but uh, it's also used to reference to the older versions, uh, version one and two of uh, the open API spec. Uh, and it's uh, based on REST and JSON. Uh, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about GraphQL, which is uh, another technique. I know there was a talk earlier about it uh, in this track, and it's a typed query language uh, where the schema and uh, data format is uh, a part of the specification and there is some support for this as well in schema thesis and it's work in progress so it's getting better every day so uh, there is a lot of uh, python implementations for open api or swagger uh, some of them are connection by salando which is a uh, spec first then there is a lot of code first which generates the specs I'm not gonna uh, say that one is better than the other, uh, depending on your use case, different styles can fit, but there is 
Fast API, which is based on async. I've used that a lot recently and I really like it. Uh, it's very Flask-like, uh, but built from the ground up for APIs and async. Then there is uh, Flask RESTX, which was previously known as uh, REST Plus, but it's forked. Uh, and there is Flasker, there is API spec, which generates specs from Marshmallow, if you already used those. Django REST framework is another. Uh, all these links are clickable. So if you go to the slides, you can click on these links and come to go uh, to the websites for the different uh, parts. Uh, yeah, so based on that, uh, we can go ahead then and go into the actual uh, subject. So the problem you may have is that you maybe have inaccurate data, maybe you get unexpected user requests or maybe a mismatch between the database layer and the application layer. There can be a library defect, there can be human errors, invalid schemas, missing edge cases. There is a lot of things that can go wrong even if you have good schemas for your APIs. So a schema isn't a guarantee that it works 100%. And there is, of course, a spectrum of defects. So not all errors are equal, uh, even if all are bad. So maybe you have an incorrect or non-conforming schema. Maybe this isn't high severity. Uh, your application probably won't be compromised only based on this, but it can break client generation code. It uh, leads to incorrect uh, assumptions, uh, which in its turn uh, costs time and money and engineering time. It can uh, break client code generation. Uh, oh, I already said that, yeah. Uh, then you have unhandled errors, uh, which is lower severity. Uh, it looks bad uh, and it's an inconvenience for uh, both the user and whoever uh, comes up on it. It can cause confusion and if you're unlucky, it can lead to further escalation. Maybe you have logic errors. These are higher, uh, can lead to data corruption, incorrect behavior. Maybe your application crashes or incorrect billing, maybe even a negative number on your uh, checkout uh, if you have a web shop. Uh, and security problems of high to critical severity, denial of service attacks, data leaks, uh, authentication bypasses, remote code execution, and many more. So, of course, we want to avoid these defects and errors and problems as much as possible. And testing is, of course, something we use to minimize this. And today, today I'm going to talk about a specific solution or a specific uh, way to run testing. Uh, I'm, what uh, I'm using today is based on property-based testing in uh, a library called Hypothesis, which is very great at finding corner cases and generating uh, a lot of uh, examples and tests. It does the heavy lifting in creating exhaustive tests. So Hypothesis is the de facto standard for property-based testing in Python and uh, property models uh, a property models the behavior of a piece of code given a certain type of input so you know it's the the way it should work but uh, you specify that in your property in a generic fashion uh, but i'm not going to go into all the nitty-gritty details uh, of property-based testing in this talk i have another talk on that uh, which you can find from my links uh, Instead, we're going to talk about a specific solution uh, and when it comes to modeling properties. So uh, the schema is a way to uh, define expected behavior and expected input. And this is pretty much the same thing as a property is. So using this fact, we can leverage this uh, with the schema thesis library. So schema thesis uh, lets you model properties and strategies from schemas. Uh, so it automatically generates test cases based on what we already know about our application and about the specs. 
Uh, it was created by Dimitri Digelo in the mid-2019 and it's very actively developed. It supports both older Swagger specs and uh, newer API, uh, open API schemas. But it also supports uh, GraphQL. Uh, the GraphQL support is still basic. The PyTest runner is in the works. It's work in progress, but it's making some uh, real good progression and it's working at the moment. So uh, try it out if you are interested and look up uh, the effort being made into getting it to work. Uh, and short about some history, influences and related works. So Schema Physics is its own library and made from scratch up on Hypothesis. But there's been uh, another library uh, prior to Schema Physics called Swag Conformance, uh, which was developed from 2017 to mid 18. And it never reached a fully stable version, but it showcased uh, that this kind of uh, generation was possible. And from my uh, knowledge was the first really known example of this type of testing, uh, but it's not actively developed anymore. Uh, and thus Schema Physics was created. Uh, there's also a research paper called Quick Rest, uh, and some of the features in Schema Physics are, are inspired from this research paper. And their findings are interesting and well aligned with what Schema Physics does. So if you're interested uh, in going uh, deeper, you could read that. Uh, and uh, then uh, let's go into uh, the more detailed stuff. So. Now we want to model some errors and to do that we need to think about how should application work and how should it work in a more generic way. So some things we know is that the application should probably respond, the server shouldn't crash, you shouldn't get the unexpected exceptions, you should get a status code which is one of the defined status responses, it shouldn't be over 500. Uh, and you can have stateful links uh, and make sure then that those behave in uh, expected uh, way. So if, for instance, you create a resource and then you query for the same resource, you want to make sure that that works. And if you update it, that should work. And if you delete it, that should work and so on. Uh, so quickly, like some set of code, we could define this like you have a response, you have a status code, uh, you want to know that it's under 500 uh, and that it's in the allowed responses status codes. Uh, you want to know that the content type uh, is in the allowed uh, sets of content types and that the content actually matches the schema spec. So these things are true for all requests in our schema and therefore we can actually use this as some kind of base to generate tests for all our endpoints. Uh, so let's pray to the demo gods and uh, see uh, if this works now. So I'm gonna showcase quickly uh, how it works. So here I have some example code. This is pulled pretty much directly from the Flask Restex uh, documentation. Uh, I've just done some simple uh, small modifications but it's basically exactly the same. So this is a to-do API. It can create, uh, delete, uh, update uh, and read uh, to-dos uh, and we want to test this API. Uh, so uh, uh, then we want to use schema thesis. Uh, so I've made a make file uh, and uh, here we have uh, how we can run it over HTTP. So, uh, so let's try this out. So I'm gonna run the server and I'm gonna run the tests over HTTP towards the server. 
Now, when I run this, you're going to see that a lot of requests will start to be logged here because it starts to test them. So, and here you can see that it's it's really hitting it with a lot of data. And you can see that it actually uh, went through and it tested uh, the get, the post, uh, the get for a specific one, the put for a specific one, and the delete for a specific one. And it passed. So now we know it works for something that works. Let's do a small modification to our code and see what happens then. So if we uh, see here, uh, here we have some business logic uh, which we want to uh, activate, where we want to inverse the ID when we get a to-do item. Uh, so let's see what happens if we save this and we run the tests again. And it's running and it's running. And now we can see that we actually got some failures. So what we saw that is that uh, if the ID is zero, because we hadn't specified that it had to be a positive integer, only that it was an integer, it fails. And both the put, the get, and the delete, which uses the ID, get the same problem. So now we have a way to reproduce this failure. And based on this, we can actually find out why it's happening. And we can make sure that this doesn't always happen. Instead, we can do something like uh, if ID is zero, then uh, uh, or if ID is, uh, isn't zero, uh, we want to run that. Otherwise, let's just return zero for now. Uh, and if we run this again, hopefully we shouldn't get a division by zero error anymore. And it works. So, this is a very quick showcase. I'm going to show you one other mode as well, because this uh, library can also import your application directly if it uses ASCII or RISCI. So if we run test uh, imported, we can see that it runs here. And here I've added some extra logging to really show that it uh, outputs some uh, random data basically for every endpoint and it's successful. Uh, so if we look how that looks, uh, basically we just run the app with the import path uh, when we run schema thesis. So that's the demo. Uh, so great. Uh, we can see that it generated a lot of random requests. We could see that it could find a failure, that we could fix the failure, and uh, that it worked afterwards. Uh, so a quick feature overview. Uh, we have CLI, we have GraphQL testing, built-in WSGI and ASCII support, uh, HTTP interface, so you can use it with any language you want. It's agnostic. Uh, we have a PyTest interface, stateful testing, there's fix-ups. I'm gonna talk a little bit about those built-in uh, fix-ups for libraries like uh, FastAPI, which have uh, some small non-conformance to OpenAPI. Uh, there are some uh, hooks, uh, global test and schema-based, so you can customize the behavior. There's something called target uh, property-based testing, which lets you search for a desired goal and quicker find uh, the results, but reduce the randomness of the tests. Uh, there's VCR, recording so you can record all your tests in vcr cassettes uh, and replay them later or use them with any software you may already have that supports the vcr cassette format uh, so you saw the cli interface basically you can run schema thesis help to get all the documentation for it as well uh, but a minimal example you can see that uh, you run schema thesis run uh, towards the endpoint and uh, then it will run the tests and you get some results. So it's very easy to use. 
and the whiskey and ascii interface i showed you as well uh, here's an example using a flask whiskey app and you run schema thesis with the app path imported uh, and you point to the endpoint for the schema uh, Uh, then we have a PyTest interface. So uh, let's make an uh, example uh, or let, let's look uh, at uh, what we could do. So we have already built in uh, checking if it's uh, not a server error, a status code conformance, content type conformance and response schema conformance. But uh, maybe we want to extend it with some complex business uh, rules. Maybe we have some response time or SLA. Uh, or maybe we want to write some properties for our authentication and make sure it's not a 401 or that it works as, uh, as we expect. Uh, so to do this, we can use the PyTest interface uh, and the PyTest interface uh, uh, can from the documentation, or this is the example from the documentation, but it can be used to customize the entire uh, schema thesis testing and you can uh, generate tests uh, and the data uh, based on the schema, but you can write your own logic for how to validate that it's correct. So in this example, you can see we test uh, if uh, the response code is under 500. Uh, this is already built in, but just to showcase how it could work. Uh, uh, so uh, next up, we have stateful testing. Uh, it's a very good way to enhance detection of certain defects. Uh, they also talk about this in the quick uh, rest research and see that it can uh, greatly uh, find defects faster. Uh, and it was recently added to schema thesis. Uh, it reuses data from a previous request uh, and response resulting uh, in uh, easier ways to find uh, defects faster. And, reaches further into your code base. Uh, it requires links between your objects, so it will work with OpenAPI free, but in OpenAPI 2 or Swagger, you need to use the xlinks uh, extension to make this work. Uh, but basically, it can look something like this. So you make a post request, and then you make a get request with the same user ID. You patch it with the same user ID. You can get, get the user again, patch it again, and so on. So you can see that it works as it should. So the future of uh, schema fee system, uh, okay. we need your help to grow. Uh, GraphQL is being developed right now and a lot of progress is being made, but a lot more can be done as well. So hopefully it will be as good for GraphQL in the future as it is for OpenAPI today. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, supporting the OpenAPI 2 and uh, uh, free uh, versions today. OpenAPI 3.1 is in the works, so it will support that when that is out. And the idea is to have it agnostic from the schema standard and uh, be able to work with a lot of different schemas. Uh, and they are working on foster test generation growing the community and of course, improve the documentation. So it's easier to adopt for new users and more. So concluding, uh, we want you to spend less time writing tests, but cover more and let your computer do the heavy lifting so you can gain deeper confidence in your services. Uh, more things are coming and you should try it out. Uh, it's very easy to get started and it's a great way to make it much easier to get much more testing in your application. So concluding, uh, if you have some questions uh, and you don't come up with them now, you can contact me. Uh, here are some links to my GitHub, to this talks uh, GitHub page, uh, and all the slides, as I said before, is, is uh, at slides.com slash Haltner. I'm making a course on Hypothesis right now, and you can sign up uh, in this Google form in case you want to get notified when it's ready. I have a previous hypothesis talk on YouTube uh, from PyCon Sweden last year uh, where you can see more details uh, about 
property-based testing. And of course, on the Discord, go to the talk testing with the schema thesis channel if you want to ask more. And uh, I'm available for training, workshops, and freelance consulting. So, any questions? Uh, first, thank you very much for the talk. And we have a few questions. And one of the questions is, can the test be customized for specific cases? Uh, so if, I mean, if I uh, understand the question correctly, uh, basically what you're thinking about is uh, this uh, uh, PyTest interface, which lets you customize uh, tests. Basically you can, uh, make a uh, test based on a specific endpoint or you can uh, add tests for the entire uh, suite. So in this case, I just showed the parameterize for the entire, for the entire uh, schema, but you could as well add some uh, custom PyTest based model for uh, a specific endpoint. Uh, and if you go to the documentations, uh, documentation, you can read more about it. Uh, but yeah, I think that should be what you're after. Yeah, thank you very much. There's the other question of, will this work with unit tests? Uh, I mean, uh, I actually haven't tried. So I guess you're talking about uh, using the built-in unit test in Python. Uh, I've only used the PyTest interface. And I'm not sure how well hypothesis in general plays with unit test, but uh, I mean, if you're using the CLI interface, you're not really, you don't really have to care about how it's implemented behind the scenes. But if you want to extend, I would recommend at least using PyTest. Maybe you can get it to work with unit test, but it's not something that's uh, officially supported as far as I know. Okay, thanks very much. And there was one unrelated question to your talk. What's your editor and command line setup? Because it's so good looking. <laughs> yeah, so I'm using VI uh, as my, uh, actually I'm using NeoVim these days, but yeah, so this is VI and I'm using Tmux uh, as my multiplexer. So I have all my, my sessions for, from my multiplexing and all my windows so I can go around between them uh, and yeah, actually I have my dot files on GitHub. So if you go to my GitHub, you can replicate my setup uh, or if you can't, you should uh, send me a tweet or something and I will help you. Okay, thank you very much. By the way, uh, the discussion can continue in the uh, talk specific Discord channel and somebody there just posted that it's available for unit tests, so that works. Thank you very oh. much for the talk.